methods assessing the formation, evolution, and trend of suture glacial lacks in high mountain area using remote sensing and Google Searching. And this project is supported by the University of Reading International PhD Studentship. Firstly, why am I interested in the suture glacial lacks in high mountain area? Because as you know, to our, uh, high mountain area has the largest number of glaciers outside the polar regions, has millions of people living downstream, and the glaciers here are super sensitive to uh, global warming. Global warming may cause the thinning and retreat of glaciers and um, lead to the formation of super glacial lands on the lower part of glacial surface. When this less correlates and accumulates, they may cause glacial lands of the frozen blood. Um, however, <coughs> how this less the, how the super glaciers respond to uh, clim respond to climate change and glacial like outburst of blood induced by the super glaciers are poorly understood. So my my PhD project aims to investigate whether and how short lived super glaciers formed by melted water from high mountain area glaciers respond to climate change and threaten downstream communities. Um, to achieve this goal. I have three main obje objectives. Firstly, I will create a uh, super glacial lab database uh, using remote sensing. I mainly use two types of uh, data. The first is optical, such as Sentinel 2 and Landsat Edge, and, uh, and the star data, such as Sentinel 1. They are free archives on a cloud based platform called Google Sensing. So I will develop a, met a method on this kind of uh, platform, um, Google Engine, so can I can um, avoid the time-consuming data processing and downloading. So uh, let's look at the middle picture. So you can see a uh, figure with lots of uh, different colors of uh, water bodies. So compared to the glacial lakes in polar regions such as Antarctica and Greenland, the identification of super glacial lands um, uh, in Hamon area will be more tricky because of the widespread of debris cover on glacial surface and the mountain shadows and the cloud clouds um, caused by the humid climate. So I will modify the current method to optimize the the, the RPLP results of of lands. This lag, these results will be validated by the current data sets, as well as um, as well as the external very of very high spatial resolution data set called such as QuickBot. So it's, there's a quick note that um, if you need a very high spatial resolution image, you can also apply for the European agency, space agency. So you can. Uh, if your if your application is successful, so you can uh, download about uh, minus two hundred square kilometers of very high spatial resolution data to uh, validate your um, your results. Secondly, I will analyze the spatial temporal spatial and temporal area variations of lens. Um, to be specific, to be specific, I will um, compare the like a real change among uh, different regions and on the different climate regimes to compare their change with relation to um, such as uh, debris cover and um, surface elevation and the terminus locations of glaciers and uh, as a climatic factors such as west list and uh, Indian monsoon. Um, certainly I will explore the key factors controlling the lake evolution to pre uh, by um, to quantify factors such as <coughs> temperature, uh, debris signals, and um, temp uh, and VM um, to uh, assess the risk of, of forming dangerous glacial lake outburst floods and to assess their impacts on glacial retreat and melt. So let's look at the uh, picture on the right side, right hand side. 
This is a lake, um, Pema Glacier in Kaura Kuram region, mapped by optical image and star image. The below figure shows the lake outline lines identified with these two types of data sets. And the bottom figure shows this lake's temporal evolution from April 2018 to October 2020. The red dots represent lake areas change mapped by optical image, and the green dots are captured by star image. So this is the end. Thank you very much indeed.